For more on this, I'm joined now by Nwako Makaipia, who is the Acting Deputy Director General for the Rail Transport. A very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for your time. One of the biggest challenges, of course, pointing to South Africa's railway system being plagued by vandalism and destruction. From a policy perspective, I mean, through the introduction of the National Rail Policy White Paper, how will infrastructure be safeguarded? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Paul, and good afternoon to the viewers. Maybe just to make a correction, I'm the acting director general for the Department of, of Transport. Responding to your question is that, uh, one, the launch of the October Transport Month goes beyond uh, the railway industry. We have the opening of or the launch of the October Transport Month happening within the rail uh, environment where we're showcasing the recovery amongst the rail corridors. And key to the question that we have asked is that uh, we can't just only invest in this infrastructure but not be able to safeguard it. So as part of our implementation together with PRASA, we have launched what we call the Integrated Security Plan, which really focuses one in terms of insourcing uh, within PRASA to have our own security guards, which we know is very costly. But secondly, within that plan, how do we then use technology to make sure that we safeguard the rail infrastructure, especially from the vandalism that has happened. Currently on the line that we have opened in Mawapani, we have already uh, deployed almost 400 uh, uh, guards, which is boots on the ground, to be able to make sure that they ensure the rail infrastructure outside. But we have even moved to a strategy of where for our safety of our commuters, we are deploying uh, some of the security within the trains to ensure safety across all the board and within the system. Mm. So with the launch of Transport Month, we're, I suppose, reminded about the importance of the sector in bolstering the economy, one, and also ensuring the safe movement of people. We're also reminded, of course, about that tragedy that unfolded on the N2 in Pongola in KZN. Twenty people killed, the majority being children. Trucks not only pose a danger to the livelihoods of people, but also they put a strain on the road infrastructure with potholes and the likes. What will it take to get to a point where there are real tangible plans and initiatives to lower the, the tonnage on our roads and also push for, for the cargo of goods onto rail? As, as a country, we are uh, having a policy direction of movement from road to rail which is something that we are pushing. And the kind of policy pronouncement we've made in this current financial year, especially the national white paper, national rail policy, becomes a key intervention of how do we then uh, move that. One uh, is that we are looking at a tangible implementation plan, which will be realized in the next five months. And we are work, hard at work engaging with the sector itself to really show how do we then make uh, that particular uh, plan a reality. One of the key policy pronouncements we have made, which will make that possible, uh, the movement of road to rail, is the issue of around concession, which is how we then move uh, the rail-friendly cargo from road to rail. And we have seen one in terms of the policy pronouncement says, now with the new pronouncement, you'll be able to have rail operators not only relying on state entities, which is Transnet, but they can be able to bring in their own own rolling stock, moving from point of destination towards the end. And we have already been approached by a number of, of operators, both in the mining sector, in the timber sector, in the fruit sector, who are really wants to work with government. And we're having those kind of engagement to make sure that becomes a reality. But even within our own space, Transnet themselves, they've already uh, uh, published some uh, requ uh, requests for those who are interested to come and operate in our rail lines uh, come uh, to uh, uh, participate to ensure that we are able to add capacity within the state. So we see that as a, mo uh, a move in the right direction. Obviously, the biggest issue is the issue of vandalism, which I think we, we need to deal with. And working together with the government entities within the security cluster, we are seeing how we then work with both uh, Prasa and Transnet to be able to deal with that particular space. 
Now, uh, the, the, the minister also spoke about uh, how it's going to cost Prasa approximately 4 billion rand to fix the infrastructure. He also spoke about how it will cost, it, it will, um, you know, it, how the budget, uh, perhaps uh, if you can clarify, you speak about uh, interested participants. I, I assume you're talking about the private sector. Who, so with this budget, how will it be split across the, the country's troubled railways and also incorporate the collaboration with the interested parties, the private sector, to aid with uh, development? The private sector, we see it in its participation as one of the funding streams that we'll be able to use to to unlock investment in, in the in the rail sector, especially the area we have identified for the private sector is for them to be able to invest in what you call uh, above rail assets, which is really your issues around rolling stock and 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 within the operations. The budget that the minister has talked about, the key focus it will be really be putting together the rail infrastructure in terms of tracks and station for us to be able to have a conducive environment because we believe that uh, uh, rail infrastructure is a strategic asset uh, that government must continuously be able to own and make sure that everyone has access in terms of uh, uh, participation in that regard. That becomes very critical in terms of economic regulation to ensure that the rules of the game are very clear in terms of the rules of access and everything. So the money that the, and the budget that the the minister talked about is really the engagement, uh, the money that you are going to invest within the 10 priority corridors, which is within Prasa, to ensure that we are able to revive the corridor, uh, the commuter network, and all the critical corridors. We have already started in terms of really opening these major corridors, Mawapane uh, corridor being on, 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 on board. We are having uh, uh, the, the Arsageville, so Solsville line being on board, and we have really opened. Uh, uh, the Pinas port, which is the Mamelodi line, which started last week, and today we're very excited that there's even improvement uh, from last week. Where we have now moved around 60 kilometers per hour in terms of that. So that's really where our focus is going to be in terms of those particular investments. And where private sector wants to come in and invest in infrastructure, where our plans are still far ahead, we'll have some engagement with them and work out some models of how as between will be able to contribute as government and then their contribution with the left will recoup over a long time. But that infrastructure, after the years of concession, must be returned back to government so that we are able to own that strategic asset. So with, with all the repairs that you speak about uh, and the new stations uh, being revamped, you also made mention shortly um, about 400 guards on the ground. Are these 400 guards going to be uh, split across the stations to, to ensure that uh, the money that has been invested is indeed taken care of? Now the 400 guards I'm talking to uh, is basically just only on the uh, 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 Pina Sport line, which we have opened today, which is boots on the ground, that is going to one be at various stations where we provide the services, and secondly, some in the in the trains. What we have done as part of the integrated security plan, we have already insourced 1, 000, 3, 100, sorry security guards in house, which are then deployed in areas of our strategic importance, especially in terms of our strategic stations, strategic corridors including our depots where we then pack our trains. And in, the, in addition to that, uh, we are uh, running the process internally. We've already brought some uh, private companies to be able to assist that capacity in terms of uh, participating in other contracts which uh, are in other state or entities where we are really deploying them additionally to our, our lines both in Cape Town and, and in, 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 in Gauteng to ensure that really we are able to run the rail services, and I can uh, uh, tell you that since we have run the Mavopane line with the capacity that we have put on board, which is almost a, 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 the beginning of this year, we have never really seen that vandalism because the kind of reaction that we have is very quick when you have enough uh, 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 people on the ground. Considering that we have a lot of security contingent, which those contracts that were irregular, they were uh, cancelled, now we are really putting the plan so that we are making sure that we are able to cut our 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 infrastructure, and we are not working alone. 
We have joint operations which we are uh, working together with the colleagues in the security cluster, inclusive of, 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 the, of the intelligence, the police, to make sure that the, that plan is very responsive for us to be able to deal with these issues. In all your measures to, to beef up security and revamp the stations, how will this now um, trickle down to the commuter? Are, are, are commuters expected now to perhaps uh, uh, fork out more for, for, for tickets? Does it affect how much they will need to pay to, to travel on the, on, this, on the trains? You'll remember both and, and, and the viewers that... Uh, Public transport in South Africa, in terms of our policy autonomy, is uh, regarded as a public good. So the elements of the investment itself in terms of the uh, Prasa modernization uh, program, it is a program that is uh, funded uh, by government and in terms of really subsidizing that particular transport. What do we are in terms of our ticket, I mean, for example, the ticket from Pinas Port into town, it's around 850. So it becomes still the cheapest mode of transport in terms of as you compare it with other road uh, based mode of transport, whether you're talking about buses or whether you're talking about uh, uh, taxis. So we are not really looking at uh, making commuters to contribute to us. Government will continue to subsidize them. That is part of our policy uh, paradigm, and that's what we, we have continuously improved. Obviously, as things uh, 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 move and we have more commuters coming back. We see that money being part of the injection towards uh, the operational uh, 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 operational subsidy, or in terms of what Prasa will be able to make to be able to run our operation. I think at a value, we want to be able to make sure that that's, there's that recovery for Prasa to be able to do our work. But the infrastructure investment, it is a bigger program of government, and that money is there. Actually, our challenge is how do we bring more capacity on board to make sure that Prasa is able to even uh, uh, make sure that they, they spend that, 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 that uh, uh, budget that has been given by government. Very well. Let's uh, leave it there for now. And thank you for your time speaking there to the Acting Director General at the Department of Transport, Mwako uh, Magaipi, about uh, the national rail policy and how it's going to work and how they're going to be using that budget. More.